So the chat you're about to see um, is a chat with Sir Kenny and Paul Dalgleish about the Wolves game. But as the chat progressed, we branched out into talking about transfers, transfers for Kenny as a player, transfers for Kenny as a manager, Paul talking about transfers for uh, him as a player. Um, so we've decided to split this, this video up into two parts. Um, so part one, you will hear today which is um, the chat about the Wolves game and analysing the Wolves game and then uh, in about a week's time we will put chat two out which is about transfers so please subscribe to the channel like this video um, and then you will get a notification for the second part which will be uh, at the end of the week Liverpool are not playing for three weeks now anyway so we, we thought we'd split them up so um, I hope you enjoy the video uh, it was great fun to uh, for us to have a chat and um, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. OK, uh, Liverpool played last night and got a 1-0 win against Wolves. And um, things are looking a bit rosier after the Leipzig game. So joining me for a chat are uh, Sir Kenny and Paul Dalgleish. Welcome, gents. This is uh, really where we should start before. And uh, Kenny, I'll get your thoughts on this. Obviously, you know, early signs are that Rui Patricio is actually OK. It looked a bit... Touch and go at the uh, the start, but I think uh, all the noises coming out of the Wolves camp are that he's he's okay. What what did you think when he when he went down? For me, well, I heard the conversation this morning saying that um, if a referee put his flag up, it might not have happened. But the ref the linesman, sorry, should have put his flag up. This might not have happened. But when you look at it, I think. The linesman's flag, the time when that got up and the time when Mo had the shot was minimal. I don't think people's momentum would have stopped. I think and Connor Cody tried to get out the way of the goalkeeper. Hmm. And just happened. I don't think he would nearly stop himself. It wasn't done in uh, obviously if it's done with your teammate, there's no there's no viciousness in it. There's no intent. I mean it wasn't as if one of the Liverpool players did it. It was just a complete accident. And I don't think anybody's to blame other than fate because uh, the lines, the lines, uh, the linesman's told just delay your flag. But surely they're told just delay your flag if it's tight. Mm. Right, so he, he rightly delayed it. And then, I mean, there wasn't much in it at all. And I think, that, uh, thankfully... He appears to be okay. He didn't have to go to the hospital. Uh, so thankfully he's okay. But it's just something that happens in football. There's no intent, no malice, nothing. Just an accident. We'll get into the game in a minute. But uh, Paul, Jurgen Klopp did, described it as three dirty points. Do you think that was the type of win that we needed? At the, yeah, bearing in mind what we've just gone through in terms of form. 100%. I mean, it's there's still three points at the end of the season. You, you, they count the same. And I think that that's the sign of a, a top team. I mean, my dad will tell you uh, when he played, they didn't play well in every game. But the top teams find a way to win, even if they're not feeling 100% or they're carrying a niggle or they're, they're, you know, they don't play well. The top teams find a way to win. And we did that last year. Um, if you think about how many games that we played last year that were decided by one goal, um, there was a massive chunk of games that were decided by one goal. So um, it's one of those ones where just take the points, move on um, and look forward. Kenny, but when we early on in the game, we, we didn't come out the blocks very well. I thought we were giving the ball away. We struggled to get going. Um you know, is that the way you saw it? Did you did you think that was Wolves nullifying us, or or, or what? You know, what did you think about I, that? I thought it was quite an even game. Uh, their distribution when it came near in and around the box, or when they looked as if they were comfortable, went astray. And we were the same. We gave it away quite a lot. I thought they started better than us. Then we picked up about halfway through. With a couple of chances, good moves. The goal came about right on half time, which was a great passing movement between the front three. Mm. Okay, maybe the goalie should have done better, but but it was the movement was good and the passing was good. The second half was much the same. Uh, both teams threatened to get another goal, but 
they couldn't. And I think it looked to, to me as if it was a an end of season game. But for us, it was important for us to get the three points. Um, for some reason or other, we've not got the consistency that we had last year. Uh, but we've got to get the three points there. And, I mean, it's still not that far away to finish in fourth. And for me, I, I just thought we'll do the players a world of good. The unfortunate thing is they're off now for a few weeks. There's no game. There's no cup games next week for us. And then it's international break. So that they've been when you get a result and you know that you've not played that well, but it still gives you the confidence to get into the next game. And if we had another game coming up quite soon, that, that probably would have been better. Hmm. But it'll be interesting, Gav, when you say the last time we won a home game. I wonder if we count that game in Hungary last week when we won 2-0. <laughs> it was a home game. <laughs> Paul, there was a lot of good news from the, from the game. We, we got a clean sheet. What will that do to the confidence of the, of the overall team, but in particular those two centre-backs? Yeah, I think for me, Gareth, I was going to say it's follow on from my dad first, which was, it, it seems to be a common theme that we, it's just that final pass, that finish, even in the in the last two games that we've won. It's been a common theme where that, that final action or the, the last actions haven't been, haven't been precise, if you like. You know, the amount of chances we created against uh, Red Bull were, was, you know, it was, some of the football was, was incredible. Um, but it's been a common theme that we, we just haven't been ruthless in the in the final stages. Um, and it's been a common theme as well at, at the back. You know, we, we've made some errors that have led to goals. So to get a clean sheet will be will be huge for for everybody because, um, you know, and, and, and just going off my dad, we're not going to play for three weeks now. I think it, do you know what? It, normally an international break for players. Sometimes players enjoy going away with the national team. Sometimes, you know, it can be more of a, a hindrance if it's not an important game. I think if you, you think about it, you know, how we all feel at this moment in time, um, actually getting out the house uh, and getting, a, you know, speaking to different people. And it, it might actually be a good escape for, for the players getting away with the international team. And, and to, get the two, to get the two wins before they go away in a short space of time, uh, you know, I'm hoping that, that the players might come back, you know, a little bit of a different scenery, might come back refreshed a little bit. It'll be interesting to see who goes on international yeah. duty and who doesn't because of the COVID restrictions. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to watch over the next few days which players pull out. And the game, the other, the game last night against Wales, the two boys at centre back did well. They never did mm. a thing wrong. They were they were good. They, they competed, and the two of them have played quite well together. Mm. So they had another performance in Leipzig last week. No goals against again. So mm. I mean they, they look they look all right. And as long as they play within the confines of their ability, we'll be all right. And I think it's reassuring that they are doing that. I, I think having Fabinho in front of them as well helps a lot, Dad. You know, like that because he he does a lot of the dirty work in front of them, cleaning things up, preventing them having to deal with situations. But listen, I I think that every time Phillips has been called upon, he's looked probably about as good an option as we've had back there at the moment. Yeah. I think he, he deserves a lot of credit. I think he's been, you know, you look at him and he, you know, not the not maybe the most mobile, not the typical Liverpool profile for a centre back that we've we've kind of got used to. But he likes to defend, you know. He, he does he does that side of the game really, really well. Uh, and I, I I think that he deserves a huge amount of credit. I think that Kabat he's obviously young, but I think at times he's struggled with movement. Often um, he's not seen runners, but uh, I think Phillips has been. You know, I think it's Phillips plus one for me to to till the end of the season. I think mean, Kabak's got quite a good, um, quite a decent career in, in paper. I mean, I know yeah. he's been relegated a couple of times in Germany, but when he went to the the, the youth games or the the tournaments, yeah, his age group, he got in the team, and when he got transferred from, I think it was the Stuttgart, he yeah. was in, he, they get relegated, but he got in the the young team of the year, 
for the for the Bundesliga. Mm. Then he got transferred to Schalke. So I mean, he's got no bad credit, and his transfer fees have all been like double digits, Paul. Yeah. So no, he's, listen, he's got, else, he's got he's got he's got he's had the... somebody else thinks he's half decent. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but you see Leipzig, you see Liverpool going through Leipzig like a knife through butter. Mm. I mean that, and I don't know whether that's the manager because we battered them when he was at Hoffenheim as well. And whether mm. it's just that style of play, Jurgen knows everything about it and what they're going to do. Whether it's yeah. because Jurgen's got the knowledge and then passes it on to the players and they produce the goods. I, I don't know, but they certainly... Well, they tried to attack us, didn't they? Uh, the Red Bull tried to attack us and it, 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 this Liverpool team set up for that. If, if you if you try and attack us, then we can really punish you if you leave any space at all for us to exploit. And, you know, I think when we've struggled this year is when teams haven't allowed us any space to attack them, you know, just allowed us the outsides and decided to defend crosses. That's kind of been the blueprint, hasn't it, for teams at Anfield recently? But, but most teams prefer that. Yeah. I mean, the hardest thing is to break down a park defence. Mm. And people say it's easier to defend. I don't know. I mean, there's been some great defensive performances and throughout the years. I remember Mourinho produced one when he was uh, mm. he went to Barca and they were they were a goal up, I think, for Milan, and they got a guy sent off early on, uh, two 0 up. I think they were. They got a guy sent off early on, and they went down to ten men, obviously. And the organisation and the performance for them, yeah. I mean, backs to the wall, obviously. Yeah. But they were they were brilliant, Paul. Yeah. So it's it's as difficult to organise yourself well defensively as what it is to be a wee bit attractive on the eye when you're going forward. Yeah, it's yeah. I think it's I think you can set a team up to defend a little bit quicker than you can set a team up to attack. I think the attacking side takes a, a little bit longer for me, but it's. It does cause a dilemma. And I think that's why Bayern Munich are so good is because they, they've they got every single attacking option that they can throw at you, no matter what you do to them. So if they, you know, if a team does say, OK, we'll allow you the wings and put cross in the box, they've got Lewandowski and Muller. They were, you know, very good at attacking crosses. Whereas we are, if someone allows us, we don't really have that same presence in the penalty box. Well, they, they had the, the big game for them, Dortmund. They went 2-0 down early on in the first half. They scored the winner in the last minute. They, yeah. they kept plodding away and believing yeah. in what they were doing to be right. And they, yeah. turned, out, they turned out the winner. So, yeah. I think if you look at, if you diverse into the, or digress into the, the European Champions League, I think um, I think they must be favourites, same in Man City. At the moment, yeah. At the so, moment, we let the, get them two to play against each other. Give us the lowest ranked team in, the, in that one. We'll take them, and then the next, the next round, the two best ones can play each other, and we'll take the lowest ranked team. And then we'll see where we are. We could be back in Istanbul again. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice. Day, I wouldn't be too proud either. You <laughs> never went. You never went the last time, did you? You were in. No, did you? No. no, no. You never experienced the disaster that was the walk to the stadium in, in Istanbul but you did the next what was the one where you had to get off the bus the last one that was, that was Madrid Tottenham. yeah we got yeah. off the bus and had to walk somebody said it's only 500 metres dear me I wouldn't like to be running that far <laughs> you, were with 500 meters. you were with Stephen Gerrard weren't you because he's talked about that right. yeah it was that hot the women's high heels were going into the tarmac. <laughs> oh, it was miles. Istanbul it was miles. Was unbelievable, Paul, wasn't it? It was in the middle. Yeah. Of, like, literally put in a, a stadium. It in wasn't the, finished. It was, it was ridiculous, wasn't it? It wasn't finished. Yeah. It wasn't finished. And there was only one rolled in and one rolled out. Mm. And there wasn't, the, the, the buses weren't moving too fast. We got stitched up, Gav. So I was, I went with Kelly and there was people selling beers on the side of the road and obviously I'm not that fluent in Turkish um, 
but now I know what sin alcohol means. Or whatever English. it was in Turkish that it said. I, I brought I brought alcohol free beer, a big crate of it. Went back on the bus, all delighted with myself. And I went, this doesn't taste right. And then we're looking. It said it must have been in Turkish. It must have said. I know in Spanish it's sin alcohol. I don't know it is in Turkish, but it definitely was no alcohol. So that that was. You've been. That, that I wasn't the most popular. <laughs> what? Thanks for the donation. You've been hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got stitched up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh well. If you're enjoying this video so far, please show your support for the Ken Seven channel by subscribing, clicking the like button and also clicking the notifications button as well to get future broadcasts. If you could also share the video on your Twitter and Facebook account, that will show YouTube's algorithm that you like our content. Have you heard about Ken7 merchandise? The link is in the description of this video. We have premium fanware for fans covering Liverpool, Celtic and Scotland and it's fanware for young and old. So we have t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, caps, mugs, you name it, we've got it. Just something else to remember, every purchase that is made on our website, we donate to the Marina Dalgalish appeal. So you're helping a great cause as well. Just go back to the game. Kenny, what do you think of um, Jota's impact since he's come back in? He, uh, he looked very lively, didn't he? Yeah, obviously, obviously it's difficult to come back straight away after the length of time he was out um, but when he came at first he was coming on his sub maybe the game was a bit tight and he would get as a goal he certainly was a threat um, and he started last night he started to look like he was before so he mm. must be getting back to match fitness now and I mean it, it, he took it first time a lot of, a lot of people would be going oh, oh what a goal it was one of them. He had to. They got and it surprised the goalkeeper as well. So no, he he was he was missed when the results were going against mm. us as well. So it's so and a lot of people forgot about him, but he made a good contribution to us at the start of the season. I think and I heard you know, he scored five winning goals since he's joined us. Five goals, including in. last including last night. Yeah. Well, there you are. Do you know what? Do, do you know what? Um, you know, I, it, I don't think. You know, I, I don't think anybody was that excited. Uh, you know, they they're obviously happy he was coming in, but I don't think anybody was, you know, thinking he was going to have the the impact that he had. Uh, you know, there was other names that were getting floated about when we brought him in, but the recruitment team deserves a huge amount of credit for 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 identifying how good he would fit into. Um, into the team and then obviously the way Jürgen's used him it's been you know, he's probably been the highlight of the season for me um, with his performances and, and you know, I don't think I think people when he was coming in were more seeing him as a, someone to give the other three a rest but he's, he's almost been the, the highlight really Well if the other three any of the, one of the other three take a rest they're in trouble I know getting back in well, oh, that's it. He's been as good as anybody when he said the opportunity. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's that's it. So I think that he's he's put himself right in the conversation to yeah to be you know for it to be a front four, not just a front three. I think for me he's and he can con- move as well, Paul. Yeah, he moves a bit. That's what yeah. I was just about just to say. He's contributing he even when he's not on the ball. He's moving yeah. people about, isn't he? That's it, Gav. You can. You know, you can move two things in the in the game, can you? You can move the ball and you can move the opposition. And that's what he does. I mean, it's it's if you move the opposition, then the, the spaces open up. And and that's what I think that Mo Salah is I think Mo Salah's the best in the world without the ball. I really do, with his movement in behind, timing of his runs, um, speed of his runs. I think he, he really is, and I think Jota has got that as well. I think Manny and Firmino both like to come and get on the ball a little bit more. Manny can do a bit of both, but I think Salah's just top, top world class with his movement without the ball. Paul, I think you would be spoiled for choice if somebody asked you, who's the best no-touch player you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I, I, honestly, I'd have been a great player until he invented the ball. I would... <laughs> 
That was my problem. If there was no ball in football, I'd have been fine. No. If it was just foot, that was okay. <laughs> you put the ball in there, you're in trouble. <laughs> So am I am I getting a bit giddy here? Because I was looking at it. We've got we had a game last night. There was 10 games from last night. If you remember us from last season and the seasons prior, it's fairly possible. It's not beyond the realms that we could go eight games, win eight games out of ten. Would you agree? Well, I don't think you're running that difficult. It isn't. Is it? So do but you think that's a possibility? Man, you's a big game away, isn't it? Yeah. I think I don't know what Arsenal what away other, is the other one. Uh, yeah, well, Arsenal are making the beach after beating Tottenham at the weekend. They'll be they'll be looking to see if they can push forward. But as I say, but I don't think the the run in. I think it's quite favourable to us. Mm. But mind you, we thought that when we, before we went through the six games and lost them at home. Yep. Then they they were against lower place teams, so. You just got to take each game, Gavin. It sounds boring, but if you can get it into your mind, take each game as it comes, and every game's difficult. And if you think that it, it's going to be easy, and you take your foot off the pedal, you'll not get any results. But this team's capable of anything. I mean, they've, they've not had a great season, but finish it in glory if they want to win eight of the last ten games. There's, were there glimpses for you last night and the game against Leipzig that that's the Liverpool that we remember? The, I, that's how I felt, but I just wondered what you thought. No, I think there's times when they've been quite fortunate. The Leipzig game, the first one away, the guy the header at 0-0 hit the inside of the post and came out. That's, sometimes there's a sign there that tells you we're going to win this game. Mm. Other times, we hit the inside of the post and it comes out when it's now now and we lose. So sometimes it's just the bounce of the ball that goes your way. But you're not going to be, you're not going to get the luck if you don't try for it. You don't get presented with it, you've got to earn it. So, I think, obviously, luck comes into football, it doesn't matter how good you are. Last year, we had a good bit of fortune. The players were magnificent, but you still... You still have a bit of luck in any game that you play. You maybe get a wee bit of luck if a referee decision or whatever else you want to go, whatever route you want to discuss, you get a bit of good fortune, you've got a better chance of winning. But you won't win a game if you don't put the application in. 